Welcome to the Leader Lounge, where we'll be taking a look at the best and worst of our leaders from the week. Now let's start with a look at our friends from Facebook and the news that Mark Zuckerberg and Liam Neeson have more in common than you'd think. That's because it's been reported that if a Facebook employee leaks information to the press, Zuckerberg will find them and he'll kill them. I will find you and I will kill you. Well, he'll at least fire them. Zuckerberg is known to share information about new projects and ideas during his company's weekly Q&A sessions. However, it's really rare that the press ever get wind of these, even when they're being broadcast to thousands of employees. So how does he do it? Well, it's real simple, through setting expectations and then following through when they aren't met. This might seem a bit like a scare tactic, but it has the opposite effect of creating a culture of, we're all in this together, and what hurts the business hurts all of us. It was reported that when Zuckerberg announced during a weekly meeting that a leaker had been caught and fired, many of the attendees of the meeting stood up and applauded. So I say bravo to you Mr Zuckerberg, that's a leadership win. Earlier this year we heard a lot about Melania Trump's speech and how it was reported she had apparently taken excerpts from a speech Michelle Obama had earlier given. Well our next story comes from Ghana and President Nana Akufa Addo's inauguration speech. And guess what? That little rascal's been up to it too. In his speech at his presidential inauguration on Saturday, he said, Though our challenges are fearsome, so are our strengths. Ghanaians have been a restless, questing, hopeful people, and we must bring to task today the vision and will of those who came before us. Which is great. Except that in his 1993 inauguration speech, US President Bill Clinton said, Though our challenges are fearsome, so are our strengths. And Americans have been a restless, questing, hopeful people. We must bring to our task today the vision and will of those who came before us. Hmm, sounds awfully familiar. And not one to have plagiarized one American president, he decided to double down when President Nana said this. I ask you to be citizens, citizens not spectators, citizens not subject, responsible citizens building your communities and our nation. Again, this sounded awfully familiar. This time to a speech given by President George Bush at his inauguration in 2001 when he said, I ask you to be citizens, citizens not spectators, citizens not subjects, responsible citizens building communities of service and a nation of character. Now, the Ghanaian president's communication director did apologize and say it was a complete oversight and never deliberate. However, I don't see how changing the word Americans to Ghanaians can be classed as uh, not deliberate. And as a leader, you've got to be authentic and you've got to be sincere. And ripping off someone else's speech probably isn't the best way to do that, especially on day one. So from us, we're going to put that down as a leadership fail. Our final leadership story today comes from north of the border in Canada, where a local businessman took it upon himself to bankroll an Ontario town's resettlement of over 200 Syrian refugees. Danby CEO Jim Still put up roughly $1.1 million, or $1.5 million Canadian dollars, to help around 50 refugee families to Canada. He then coordinated a community-wide effort to help them resettle. As part of his resettlement program, he helped them with English lessons, finding a job, and if they wanted to start their own business, he helped them with that too. He was quoted as saying, I don't want to bring people in and put them on welfare, adding, if that happens, I've failed. His vision and passion for the cause led to hundreds of people to volunteer their time and effort to help these refugees. J.A. James, who works with Jim, said he contributed the vision and the contacts and they helped train, mentor and screen around 800 volunteers. 800! Jim himself was reported to be completely perplexed by the praise he received and said he simply had this vision and a means to help. 
He referenced his values his parents gave him and instilled in him as a driving force behind everything. Here's a great example of a leader who is able to inspire and motivate hundreds of people through generosity, empathy, vision and values. A definite leadership win. You can find links to all these stories below and if you like our video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Want more on leadership? We put a ton of content out for modern professionals. Get a subscription to LearnLoft where you can take our online leadership programs at learnloft.com. You can also read our blog, listen to our podcast and sign up for our newsletter. How's my hair look? Good. Good hair day.